Oasis Life Church would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we live, study, work, worship, and meet, the Baradabana people. We also pay our respects to the elders past, present, and emerging, and extend that respect to other Indigenous people who are with us today. Um, well, um, <clears throat> I think um, what I'm going to share today is more more or less like attached or more or less like in a, a, a continuation to what I shared last time when I was talking about God uh, being, being there all the time and us um, as his children uh, uh, sort of like um, moving away from him and then we feel like we are neglected or we feel like God is not with us and when we pray, we then call, inviting God to come when actually we'll be us, we'll be who they've moved away. So I think last time I said, God is always with us, and it depends on whether we are um, on our position, which is where God wants us to be. That's when we realize that uh, God is with us. But when we are far away, we don't realize that God is with us. That's when we feel like we are, um, we are left alone. Today I'm going to uh, talk about God's love uh, in our lives. Uh, thanks, Alex. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to talk about God's love in our lives um, in the similar uh, vein, what I shared about God's presence in our lives. We'll start to read from John chapter 1, one of my favorite verses, John chapter 1, verse 12. I think it's up there on the screen. It says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Um, so we, 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 we were created by God. All of us, everyone was created by God. So we are God's people as all. Well. We are God's creation. But there is an extra step. There is that step that when we believed in Jesus Christ, uh, we then become children of God. So everyone was created by God. No one is here by virtue of uh, uh, just, just being there, but God, God created everyone. Even from the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Um, he created everything in it. And then he went on further. For us then to have that father-son relationship with God, he then gave us his uh, son, Jesus Christ, which, which in John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the, in, in the same book, at the beginning, that's where we hear about Jesus Christ being there when uh, the earth was being created. And then this verse, which is verse 12, which says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. So once we believe in Jesus Christ, would have accepted, um, would have accepted God's condition for us to be children, or would have been adopted to be God's children. And by being God's children and be, having the right uh, to become children of God, it means we, we have now the access to all benefits or all rights that God's children have. Right? So be, being given a right, I think most of us might have dealt with a contract at some point, uh, whether employment contract or a rental contract or... Um, <clears throat> in other contracts you might have um, uh, you might have uh, had there are some rights there are some things that people are allowed to do or there are some things that people are supposed to get because of an association or because of um, uh, what can I say because of an association or because of a relation or because of uh, employment or whatever So, or being part of an organization so there are some rights. You talk of companies, they are, they are company benefits, right? You get a salary, you might be given a house at a cheaper rental, or you might be given a car to use to go wherever you want to go. You might be given a phone. 
those are benefits you get by, uh, of course, signing on the dotted line to say, yeah, I agree to be, uh, to be your employee. Uh, same with citizenship. Like, I'm a good example. Next year or whenever we have got uh, federal elections, I can stand up and say, yeah, I want to be the president of Australia, uh, the prime minister of Australia, sorry. Um, and it's because I have that right after I become a citizen of Australia, right? So there are some benefits, there are some rights that we get uh, because of association or because of what we have done. And in this case, Whoever believes in God has the right to become a child of God. And then we become sort of like legible to everything that God has. I mean, I can go on and on and talk about all the rights children have. I mean, everyone who have got a child, I mean, there are some rights, there are some uh, benefits that we get from our parents. There is that, um, what can I say, like you would know that, yeah, this is my, my parents' house, and you go there knowing that it's your parents' house. You don't have to, um, to go there thinking, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to either a hotel or something like that. You're going to a parent, right? You're going to somewhere where you belong, and you have the right to open the refrigerator, take food, eat. But what I'm trying to just uh, symbolize here is to say, as children of God, we have... Um, the right of everything or all the benefits that God has uh, in his kingdom. When we read uh, from the book of, so this, is, so this is in John chapter 1, where we read about uh, God giving us the right to become his children and us having uh, all the benefits or anything that you can think of. I think we spoke a lot about what God can do in our lives in terms of uh, God can fight for us. God can be there for us even when we are in time of trouble. <clears throat> in the book of Romans, so the book of Romans, I think, is one of the letters that were written by Paul. Uh, and if, we, if you read the Bible, we first have got the four Gospels. Um, uh, Mark, Matthew, uh, Luke, and John. And then after that, we have the Acts of the Apostles, which sort of um, chronicles the start of the church, as in when Jesus went to heaven, what he instructed his disciples to do, which then birthed the church, which is us. We are the church, uh, the believers, uh, or those people who believe in God, and how they sort of like moved and how uh, God was, um, uh, was adding many to them. And then we hear about Paul's life, uh, how, how Paul was Saul, and then he got, con he, he, he got converted to, to be a Christian, and then he started to preach the gospel. And he was um, called to preach to Gentiles. Just a little bit there. So in the beginning, we hear about God creating Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve, the story goes on. They seen they were um, taken out of the garden. Then they were given whatever they were given. Then we hear about um, uh, the time of Noah, <clears throat> when people were told to repent. They didn't repent. All of them, they perished apart from Noah and his family. And then we move from there. And then we start to see mankind uh, evolving or sort of like uh, increasing. We hear about um, Abraham. Abraham having a covenant with God or having, uh, what can I say, a, like a personal relationship with God, which then he got a promise to say his children and children and children are going to inherit um, like... His, Canaan, which was more like a, a good place to be. And then we, we go on to, to hear about the Israelites. They went to Egypt. They came back. Uh, and now we have more like a secluded people, just the Israelites who were um, children of God, you'd, you'd say, because their parents or their uh, forefathers had a covenant with God. Now, Jesus Christ, when he came and died on the cross... He died for everyone. So he didn't just die for the Israelites. He didn't just die for those people who had a physical covenant with God. And by his death, he made us all into a covenant with God. And when we read out in, in Romans, uh, it talks about Gentiles and Jews being the same. So 
we are like Jews in the sense that we are now having the same condition where if one believes in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ came and became a, a, a human being and died for our sins, we have the same privileges that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were given or had by me of uh, by, by us just merely um, believing that Christ is Lord or he died for our sins. So this is the covenant that we are in, right? For those uh, who are children of God, this is the covenant we are in. And the book of Romans just try to simplify it to say, Gentiles or Jews, you are the same. As long as you believe in Jesus Christ, as long as you believe that Jesus Christ came on earth and died for your sins, you are the same. And uh, with that... How, um, I thought, I was thinking to say, how best can I structure this message? Would I go from Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 3, and sort of like go through what uh, Paul was teaching us or was telling us and realize that I won't have time. So what I did is I just went into, <clears throat> went to Romans chapter 8. Um, so if you read in the Bible, we hear about how... Men, cow, how people, um, as, I, as I've mentioned, God created people and then uh, through Adam, and then it was through Adam that then we sinned, and then after we've sinned, we fell short of God's glory, but in that, God has got his redemption plan, which is Jesus Christ dying for us on the cross, and all of us, Gentiles and, um, uh, and Israelites are the same before God. As, soon, as long as you believe in God, then you have the right to become a child of God. I want us to read uh, from Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 30 and 32. So in Romans chapter 8, it talks about us uh, being victors uh, in God. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, I'll read verse 30 and 32. It says, And having chosen them, he called them to become, uh, to come to him, and having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for, for us all, won't he, also give, um, won't he also give us everything else? So that's uh, verse 32. To say, it says, firstly, verse 30 talks about that God knew us and he gave us his son. And then the question here now is to say, now that he, he even given us his child, his child uh, Jesus Christ, his only son, will he withhold anything uh, from us? When, um, so when God, when God um, was doing covenants with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, there were some conditions that were laid, or there were some things that they were supposed to do. Um, either they were supposed to um, uh, find an animal, a clean animal, young animal, they would slaughter it, and then they would do uh, an altar and sacrifice it, and then they have the covenant. Uh, but when God was having a covenant with us, he did it once and for all. So Jesus Christ died at the cross some 2,000 years ago. And that covenant still stands even for those or for people who are not yet born. It's still the same covenant. So God already has done his part. So God has already done his part as in to say he has already done his part of the covenant. So that's God's part of the covenant, giving us Jesus Christ to die on the cross, which that one is done and it's already put, it's already on the cross. Now what's left is for us to believe or whoever believes in Christ that he died for their sins, then they become children of God. And then they now have got the right to become, um, uh, to, to become his children, which then means that this love of God is there always, right? Since 2,000 years ago, this love of God has been there. Actually, it has been there before that. But I would say when 
God demonstrated his love to the whole world and also gave us that opportunity to become his children. Because in the Bible, it talks of um, people before the death of Christ, yes, God still had individual, uh, sort of, he still had in relationships with people, even non, 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 non-Israelites, he used to have relationships with them. But in this case, God has now put it open and say, hey, and it's written everywhere, uh, to say, if you believe in me, you become my child. And that condition hasn't been changed. He hasn't come back like what, I mean, companies do. Even countries, sometimes um, they can cancel your citizenship. But in this cause, in this case, God will never change. His love will never change. His love will remain the same. From the beginning, his love is still the same. And it's for us then to move into our position or in, to get into that relationship with him or to get closer to him and be with him and also be in that relationship with him. So oftentimes, I think uh, I'm not alone here. We feel like God doesn't love us. Who hasn't felt that? I have. Right? When things happen, you'd feel like, hmm, I don't think I'm loved anymore. It's like a child in a naughty corner. Not to say that would be naughty, but I'm just trying to think to say, what are the feeling people would have? Uh, it's more like, like when a child is in a corner, you'd be thinking, oh, mom and dad, I don't think they love me. Not to say that would have done bad, but I think in our lives, we had gone to a situation where we feel unloved or where we feel like God is distant from us and his love is not there anymore. But I tell you what, God's love is always there and God's love will always be there. The way it was 2,000 years ago, or the way it was when Jesus Christ died on the cross, is the same way it is today. It's the same intensity, is the same, um, what can I say, it's the same depth that he still has. And that will never change. That's what I like about God. He will never change. Things may change, it might rain. We might have um, a climate change. Everything can happen in the world, but I guarantee you, God's love will never change. God's love will remain the same. How perfect it is to say that you know that there's something, there's something that is constant. There's something that you know is, no, is not going to, um, uh, to be different given whatever situation, God's love will always remain the same. So that's what I think um, we need to know, what we need to understand. I'll just quickly read um, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Can, ever, can, anything el- can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean... He no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death. That's a question I think that we all faced at some point or that's a question that some of us are living in today or that's a question some of us are facing today. That's a question many people out there are facing. Remember, this love is not just for us, it's for everyone, right? Even people at work, everyone at work, everyone in our community, even those who don't believe God's love is still the same. Still the same. And the question is to say, well, is there anything then that can separate us from that love? Is there anything that can put a wedge between us and God's love. And the answer is a bit of a, um, it's a bit long. Uh, 
in a verse, which is Romans chapter 8, verse 37 to 39. It says, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor our lives, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in, in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. I think Paul here tried to touch both the positives and the negatives. Neither life nor death. Never powers above or below. Neither angels. Neither angels. Angels, we know demons. We, we can think of them as negatives. Neither angels can separate us from the love of God. So nothing will separate you from the love of God. I just feel like encouraging you this morning, whatever situation you are in, whatever situation you are going through, know that God still loves you. Amen? God still loves you. Whatever situation it is, whatever is happening, God still loves you. And his love is constant. His love doesn't change with time and doesn't change with climate, neither does it change with our environment. It will remain the same. We might be good at the moment. We might face challenges tomorrow. We might be in situations tomorrow. One thing we need to know is God is still the same. I like what Em said, that whether it's you're up there, up the mountain, or you're down there, you must know that God still loves you. There's one statement that we used to, to be told when we were at uni. Uh, we used to be told that whatever happens, God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. He's still there. So that's one thing that we need to remember. So the same thing with, with God's love. That's what we need to remember every time we're in whatever situation, that God still loves us. Amen. All right. I'll stop here. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love that is constant and that is uh, always there for us. We thank you for dying for us at the cross, demonstrating your love. And we thank you for offering us this love and offering it to everyone. And I want to pray particularly for Moranba, oh God, and I pray for families, those, oh God, who, do, who don't believe in you. I pray that they experience this love. In the name of Jesus, I pray that they experience this love. I pray for your love, God, to flow through this town. In Jesus' name, I pray that everyone in this town may feel your love, oh God. Even in the whole world, I pray that everyone may feel your love, feel your love in Jesus' name. That they experience it and that they, 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 they benefit from it. I give you glory in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. To find out more information about our church or services, you can contact us by emailing office at oasislife.com. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or join our WhatsApp group. Thanks again and have a great week.